In this presentation, we're going to uh, go back to uh, having a look at descriptive statistics. Uh, in previous presentations, I looked at histograms, box plots, and uh, quickly we had a quick look at descriptive statistics. Um, this, in this data set, I'm going to use it to sort of learn, use what we've all learned already in my previous videos, just to actually sort of put it into practice and to try out something tangible or tractable. So I'm going to work here with a data set called GE. It's on my website somewhere. If you can't find it, just ask me in the comments. And so I'm going to work with a data set here called GE. Now I'm going to uh, use this particular data set here, volume. Okay, so volume. Now, um, let's just start off very easily. We'll look at the, do some graphics of this data set. It's a continuous uh, numeric variable, so histogram and box plot would be very useful here. So we'll go for a very simple uh, fitting histogram. Click OK. Just uh, deselect that. I had that from my previous video, so I'm going to select volume here. Select that. OK. And the there we go. That should come up. Now, what we have here, as I'll try and make that a little bit bigger, what we have here is essentially a histogram of the data. Now, you might notice that uh, that a lot of the, um, seemingly most of the, the, the essentially we have uh, the main range of values, the main set of occurrences of values would be between, let's say, I think that's 4 million to 12 million where we have this very unusual uh, case where we have one very high value. Now we're going to call that an outlier. Okay, so essentially what we've done here is we've identified an outlier. In fact, we might have identified a few outliers because this could also be considered an outlier around here at the 20 million mark. Okay, now there's no clear definition about what outliers are. So we're just essentially uh, outliers are values, uh, outcomes that are a bit of a surprise to us. That's the only sort of de the only sort of definition I'm going to apply to outliers. So I'm going to close that down. Okay, no. Now what we also might do is look at a histogram, a uh, box plot. So I'm going to go to graph and I'm going to go box plot. Uh, click OK there. Just use volume again. Just get rid of that. Click out, click volume. Click OK. There we go, and a graph comes up here. Now, the orientation is vertical here, uh, but essentially this represents the number line uh, and the main sort of region of occurrences on the number line. The number line is actually sort of orientated vertically here. So what we might do, what we're interested in seeing is that, saying is that most of the values are sort of occur between 3.1 million and 7.68 uh, million, or is that 68 million? Sorry, 31 million uh, to about 77 million, actually. So, so most of the 50% of the values have that uh, are in that range of values. But we have one up here. We've got three outliers, and this is 27 million or 277 million, actually. There's another outlier here. So these are values that are usually high. Okay, that's the point about uh, box plots. Actually, they are very good at sort of indicating uh, surprising values, and they will do that by uh, uh, sort of uh, identifying these sort of points here, uh, outlier symbol, and so on. And Minitab, when when you click on Minitab, you're able to identify. The, the case number or the row number and what the actual value is. Okay, so in that case it's row 44 and it is 194 million. And again up here we have case 43, 277 million. Okay, now, um, so what I'm going to do now is go to stat. Okay, I'm going to have a look at the descriptive statistics. And I'm only going to focus in on volume. Okay, so just get get rid of most of those and just keep volume. Click OK. 
Now, a whole bunch of plots have come up there, so I just better go run through that again, actually, just to take it in some baby steps. So I'm going to click Graph, uh, sorry, Stat, Basic Statistics, OK. Now, I think what has happened here is I've actually automatically put in some of these graphs here. So essentially, the two steps I've done already to get the histogram and the box plot, I've done automatically, or I could do automatically, just by getting uh, pressing this graphs button and saying we're also on histograms and box plots uh, of the this data set so what's going to happen here is that now that I got these two options clicked histogram and box plot th those two plots we've seen already are already go are going to be automatically created now the main thing I'm more interested in here is statistic the statistics and I'm going to click on a few of these um, First quartile, yeah, I usually, I'm going to go with all the default options here, but I'm also going to put in this trimmed mean, okay, and I'll knock out standard deviation and variance, we're not going to use that this time around, they're usually quite interesting to know, but for this, for this particular exercise, they're not the most interesting thing I need to know. So I'm going to click OK there, okay. And what should happen now is a few plots have come up there. That's the plot we've seen earlier. I'm going to sort of chop that down. I'm going to chop that down. We've seen that earlier. That's just been brought up automatically now. That's the session window. Okay, but I'm just going to go back here. This is the session window. I've just sort of gone back up a bit. Now, this is the main set of descriptive statistics for the volume variable okay so the mean is um 60 million okay the maximum is 277 million the minimum is 17 million okay the inter the q1 that is to say that's the threshold uh, to sort of say that a quarter of the values are less than q1 uh, one half of the values are left less than the median Q2, and three quarters are less than the uh, Q3. So that just gives us a rough indication about where, the mo uh, like, where 50, the central 50% of the data is between 31 million and 76 million. Okay, with half the data being less than 52 million. It's just a sort of what they call the interquartile range. Now. Essentially, the big disparity between Q3 and the maximum, which goes from 77 million to 277 million, sort of indicates that we have skewed data or data with outliers, or which would be the, both. Now, the mostly what we have there is uh, pretty okay, but essentially uh, we sort of indicate what we have there is outliers. So essentially what we might be interested in the situation is when we have outliers is we might compare the mean and the median. So the mean here is about 60 million and the median is 52 million. Now that's a quite a big difference between the two. So that's another indication of um, the effect of these outliers here because it really changes uh, you the outliers would really affect the difference between the mean and the median okay in the case of outliers um the median is more useful and how do you t like essentially when how, when is the median more useful when it's very different from the mean that's just a sort of uh, quick way of putting it there's also a thing here called the trimmed mean which i think is really interesting the trimmed mean is the mean when you get rid of values at the lowest values and the highest values. So essentially what happens here in the trimmed mean, it, I think it's usually 95% trimmed mean, is that you take off the top 2.5%, uh, so example the, the top 2.5% two, the two of the values, the maximum values, and you also get rid of the minimum values and just get rid of them altogether statistics let's see it doesn't really say anything there about how much it is I think it's 95 percent so it's essentially the mean of the middle 95 percent so it's just get discarding the lower two and a half percent and discarding the upper two and a half percent and sort of seeing what you get there 
So that's just a sort of quick rundown of you like using a um, SP uh, mini tab to um, have a quick look and see if there's any outliers in your data set. Okay.